image to 3D and text to 3D AI is here. I mean, it's been here for a while, but it's starting to get good. Like, weirdly so, it is starting to produce some things that you're like, oh, I didn't know it could do that. Um, yeah, it's not great. Like, it's for sure still producing weird artifacts and different things going on, but it's worth talking about and being ready for because if you saw what happened in 2D space, it's definitely going to happen in the 3D space. And there's going to be assets out there, regardless of the ethics involved, this is for sure going to be producing some things. So I want to cover what does it look like today? Is it usable? What does it look like? What is the experience like? And then uh, a couple of workflow and pipelines that I at least tried to produce some things that I think that are usable. And I'll get that onto the second half of the video. So let's go ahead and jump on in to Meshi.ai, which is the tool that I'm going to focus on today. So Meshi.ai is just one of a few different tools. I like it because the user experience is the best that I've tried. Um, it costs money. There is a free tier. We'll talk about it. But the actual speed of results and everything, it's the best, I think, out there right now. Just two days ago, they released Meshi 2, which is a big step forward from Meshi 1. I was playing with Meshi 1, trying to see whether or not this thing was usable, and all of a sudden, Meshi 2 dropped, and it was a lot better. I mean, look at some of these results. I mean, obviously, they're cherry-picking, but this is impressive. I mean, that is a boot, and it looks legit, and it would be a good prop if you had a need for a high-quality boot. I mean, there's definitely artifacts and weird things going on, but pretty decent. So I wanted to see, can I do this myself and get the same type of results? So I went ahead and here is the user interface and started to play with this thing. You've got a prompt input, a negative prompt input. You have different art styles. I would recommend cartoon or realistic. Low poly just got a little bit too, I don't know, not usable for me. You've got a seed to try to control it and make it consistent. Now, if I lean out of the way, which way do I have to go? Oh, this way. <laughs> you can see this thing costs five credits to, to, to even produce these four low quality things that you can kind of choose between and hit refine. I've got my credit count up here. If I hit refine, it costs 20 credits, and I get something like this. Is it recognizable as a medieval villager? I think so. Is it great? No. I mean, look at his face. There's some weird stuff going on here. It's amazing that it produces a color map, and it does all this, but it's not perfect. I mean, if you zoom in here, there's like a few different faces, I think. <laughs> like, <laughs> there's some weird stuff going on. But, all right, this is, this is a thing. It's working. It's producing an asset. So let's just you know keep trying with it a little bit. All right, here's a, here's a female character. All right, same kind of weird artifacts, but not bad. Here's a fish. Hey, it did pretty good on the fish. This was, I was, I was like, wow, this is amazing. You know, this is actually pretty good. It's got a weird third eye, but who cares? I mean, we all got some weird things going on. So you keep going. All right, you got a mine cart. I don't know, some different type of fantasy assets you might want to use in a I don't know, Clash of Clans type of game, I guess. Uh, I tried an ogre. Uh, you know, I thought I thought this was decent. I mean, the face is goofy, like all of them are still, but definitely recognizable as an ogre. A funny rat with, uh, you know, three tails. <laughs> Here's, you know, a rat with maybe a wood peg tail. I don't know, <laughs> but it's producing some funny things. Uh, you know, different spaceships, etc. So, all right, it's producing assets. It's not perfect. I mean, look at these things. There's all sorts of weird artifacts going on. I, you know, I wouldn't want to just drop this in my game and use it. It wouldn't look great, ethics aside. But let's just talk about how we might be able to use it as it stands. So I didn't talk, oh yeah, let's talk about pricing before we go into there. Pricing, it costs five credits to generate ideas. Uh, then you refine it for 20 credits and to download it, it costs 20 credits. Now, once you download it, you can choose any of these and you can re-download it as many times as you want in whichever format, but that's 45 credits. Um, so what does the pricing look like? There's a free tier, you get 200 credits per month. That's basically, I guess, four models you can download a month just to try it. Otherwise, it's $16 a month or $20 a month <laughs> unless you do yearly. And for you, that might either be a steal or like, no way, never using this. But Anyways, let's keep going on. Point of this video is talk about the state of this thing and how you might still use it regardless of the price and probably what's going to be out there a year from now. So with our example, coming back to our villager, I wanted to see how could I use this? And the thing that I thought about is obviously if you look at it from certain angles or you zoom out, it's more recognizable as a decent asset. As you zoom in, it looks a little bit ugly. So what art styles work well for this? Well, there's pixel art or there's kind of the, the blurred out, you know, maybe like old school RTS type uh, look. 
And I've played with this in the past using Blender and rendering them out the sprite sheets. So that's what we're gonna do. So if you take a model like this and you export it, and then you bring it over to Mixamo, which is a fantastic free tool, which I highly, highly recommend. Reload it, so now she's walking again. It has all these free you know, free animations. You can upload your character. It gives you a little screen where you can like rig it and drop the little things on the wrists and the knees, and you hit OK. And then all of a sudden you can just choose out of like thousands of animations what you want, and then you can download it. So in this case, we've got a walking animation. Um, now I already did this on the male dude and I brought it into Blender. So let's see what that looks like. So here's our guy in Blender, okay? He's got, you know, his weird stuff going on. He's got his color map. It's it's okay, it's not great. Um, I, I did wanna, you know, since I am in Blender, let's at least throw a couple of different shaders on it. This is a Toon Smooth shader that you can get on Blender Market. I wanted it because of the style I'm gonna go after and I wanted to increase the saturation a little bit, which you don't need the shader for, but you get the idea, here we are. I wanna try making some pixel art with this. So if you come in here and you know, hit F12, I've got it set to only 64 pixels. You get something that kind of looks like pixel art and you obviously can't see all those little nuanced issues once it gets rendered to pixel art. But let's talk about the different resolutions and I, I did a mock-up here. So these are your different resolutions of that walk cycle. This is at like you know, 500, 12 by 512 and on down. And to be honest, a lot of these you can't really tell of those issues, at least because of the angle we're at. Um, but if you were at this size or smaller even, you're probably not gonna be able to notice all those little imperfections in your game. So if you've got a need or a style that can work with this, this could be a good path. Another thing you can do is if you're not happy with the palette or the coloring or maybe the style and you want to play with it some more, you can get this thing into A-Sprite. So using a tool like Texture Packer, you can take your output of your animation from Blender that you've rendered, drop it into here, get a sprite sheet, and bring it on into A-Sprite. So inside of A-Sprite, you've got this now, and you can see here are all the colors uh, that came in that's sitting on this sprite sheet. Right away, you can come in here and be like, hey, you know what? I'm going to create a new palette from my sprite. I'm gonna maybe limit the palette just to make it a little bit more interesting. So maybe I'll make it no more than 128 characters. I'm gonna leave the alpha component checked, hit that, and it reduces it. And now let's change the color mode to indexed. And there's a slight change in case you didn't you know, see it or pick up on it. And there you go. You can also do a couple things where if you wanna go back to color mode and do RGB, you can do some effects. So maybe I wanna do a, um, I wanna blur this a little bit. So there's less, detail right and then let's go back to our index mode and let's change it to a different palette now that it's an index and so you can do different things like i don't know what is this fantasy all right this looks terrible don't worry hit remap and there you go now you have a different you know reduced color palette art style let's try a different one coming over here you can do this low spec one hit remap and there you go and you can do different things and you can sharpen it. But once it's in here, you can be like, yeah, hey, you know what? Let's, let's add a effect for outlining it, right? And there you go. You can go ahead and outline this thing. And now you've got an outlined sprite. So is this great? Is it ready to use? Maybe, probably not for your, you know, if you're just wanting to drop this into your game. There are some amazing examples where people have gotten some pretty good models to come out of this thing. But you're rolling the dice and you also get a lot of bad models still too. I think that this is going to be a thing. Uh, whether or not the ethics of it, it will be a thing. Think about where 2D was and where it is now. It is on a trajectory where this will be a thing. Right now as it sits, I think the workflow for converting it to 2D sprites is a valid one. And for just dropping in 3D is so-so. Probably not worth it quite yet. So with that said, if you enjoy this type of content, feel free to subscribe, leave me a thumbs up. It's free for you to do, it makes a big difference for me. And uh, if you enjoyed this, talk about it in the comments. Talk about, you know, what ideas you might have besides the workflow I described on how you could leverage something like this. And with that said, good luck, everybody, in your game dev journey.